In previous episodes, I've spoken a lot about having an in-depth understanding of how the indicators that you use really work. This means both understanding the calculation, of course, but even more importantly, fully understanding the resulting behavior of the indicator and the messages that it gives out. So in this episode, I'm going to set you a challenge, a test to see if you really understand the indicators that you're using as much as you think you do. It's an exercise that I undertake myself whenever I'm considering the use of a new indicator. And I'll talk you through this process today. Now, when I do this myself, it's not until I can successfully complete the task repeatedly that I'll even consider incorporating the new indicator into a trading strategy. And by the end of this episode, you'll be able to put yourself to the test in exactly the same way. Personally, I find indicators fascinating as well as being incredibly useful. And one class of indicator that can tell us a huge amount about what the market is doing is known as an oscillator. And these form components in many of the different strategies I use. But they're only useful if you properly understand them and properly understand the information that they're giving out about the underlying price action. When you get to a point where you truly understand how a particular oscillator works in different market conditions and in relation to different price action patterns, you should be able to do the following task successfully. You should be able to look at an oscillator without looking at the price chart at all and then make a fairly accurate prediction of what the price chart will look like. You can then compare your estimate with the actual price chart to see how close you were. And unless you can do this reliably time after time, I'd argue that you probably don't understand the indicator quite as well as you thought, and certainly not enough to use it to properly inform your trading. But what I'll show you today isn't just a way of testing yourself to see if you do understand your indicators as much as you think. It's actually an educational process in its own right. And by continually using this technique again and again, you'll get better and better at interpreting what your indicators are telling you. And that will mean that you get that deep understanding that I've been talking about. And when you have this deep understanding, you're then best placed to design the rules that use this indicator in your trading strategy. So I'll show you step by step how I do this, and then it's over to you. By the end of this episode, you'll have everything you need to try this task out for yourself. Choose one of the key indicators that you use and put yourself to the test. How successful will you be? So let me now explain the process that I use. So the first thing to note here is that I use a very simple utility script that allows me to select a random part of the chart. And this means I can easily bring up some indicator values that I've not seen before. So here you can see that as I start that script, it automatically takes me to a different part of that price chart. So just to show you that script now, all it does is it makes sure that the auto scroll capability of the chart is disabled. It seeds the random number generator with the tick count so that that's got a different seed each time the script is run. And then it calculates a random bar. So in this case, it calculates a bar between zero and 5,000. So you need to make sure you've got at least 5,000 bars in your price history on the particular chart and time frame in order for this to work properly. And then finally, the most important command is the chart navigate command. And this just takes me to the location on the chart identified by the bar number of the random shift. Now, if you're interested in using this script yourself, I'll put a link to where you can download that from in the description below. So now coming back to MT5, I'm going to hide 
the price window completely. Just make the oscillator data a little bit smaller and recalculate a random position on the chart. And now I'm going to try my best in order to estimate what the price action will look like based on this indicator information. So what I can see here is that there's initially a probably some kind of a trading range as we get equal values on the maximum values here. But then you'll notice that the momentum takes a downturn. Um, initially, it's a little bit weaker, but then becomes a lot stronger. And so this is an indication of a downtrend, which is increasing in strength. We then see the oscillator turn upwards, as you can see here. But because it doesn't reach the, the top end, the overbought end of the oscillator, this is indicative of a pullback from that trend. And then as you can see here, the trend resumes. So what I think we have here is an initial upward price movement, followed by probably a similar size down and up again. And then at this point, we have a relatively weak trend until this point. And then I believe that trend gets a little bit stronger like this. We then have a pullback signified by this bump here. And then again, the trend continues down. So that takes us to about the halfway mark. What then happens is that the momentum changes direction. So at this point, it could, in reality, be nothing more than a large pullback. But what we can see is there's an initial turn back down like this, but then again, we start to see a stronger uptrend, which means that during this period here, we will be having um, a continued rise above the level of this. And then again, because this dip in the stochastic here doesn't reach the oversold levels, again, this is indicative of a pullback from that uptrend. And then what happens next is that the trend continues and will make new highs, I'm pretty sure here. And then we have a period where this is more than a pullback now, and we've got this sort of behavior where we've got an extended down period followed by an up period and another down period. So this is what I would estimate the chart to look like. So if we now just make this a little bit smaller, and take a look at that and compare it, as you can see here, we've got the, the zigzag, as I mentioned, it did actually make a slightly higher level here, whereas I had it on a, on, a, on a level. But then we do get this major downtrend, followed by the uptrend and the pullback, as you can see here, and another pullback, as you can see here, before it made this new high over here, and then the price begins to fluctuate in this trading range, sort of beyond that trend, as you can see. So although I actually estimated that this would make a new high above here, in actual fact, it was slightly lower, but it's a fairly good effort. So let's now try this again. So we'll hide our price chart again, navigate to a new location here. Okay, so here, the period of time that the stochastic stays in the overbought region here tells me that we're in an uptrend with a pullback and then a continuation of that uptrend. We then have a shorter term downtrend here with some oscillation and then we're back into the uptrend. 
before we start to see this low volatility trading range here. So if I take a look at this, probably fairly soon into here, it is going to be making these highs here with a pullback and probably a new high. Then there's probably a bigger pullback, which represents this part of the stochastic here before again making a new high and then turning down. And this dip and then second dip is probably indicative of a zigzag pullback, which might be a, a pullback of a larger term uptrend that we can't see before here. But then the uptrend continues for an extended period of time. So if I just change this a little bit. And then what happens is that the trend seems to lose its steam. And because this is fluctuating within the two levels here, this is probably a fairly low volatility trading range, then has a one final burst in terms of an uptrend. And then we see this turn down into this downtrend here with a pullback and a further downtrend that you see here before the price then starts to do something like this. So let's now take a look and see how accurate we were with this. Okay, so we have our uptrend here with the pullbacks as you can see, but then we do eventually make this new high. We've then got the zigzag pull back here from that trend before we have this long duration trend and when we get to the top of this as I said it looks as if the trend is beginning to lose some of its momentum which is why we get this fluctuation but we did indeed make a new high here before we had this downtrend with the pullback here and then the final zigzag, and we're not sure what happens to the right. So again, a fairly good estimation of what happened to the price based on the characteristics of the stochastic indicator. Now, the specific task of predicting the price chart in this way is only going to be relevant to some types of indicators. But if you're using an indicator to inform the timing of either trade opening or trade closing, then you really should be able to do it, since you're using the indicator to directly anticipate a price movement in a particular direction. So these are the types of indicators that this exercise is best suited to, as opposed to an indicator that, for example, tells you nothing other than the volatility of the price action. But of course, you might still have to adapt the task slightly for different types of indicators. For example, if you're using an indicator that tells you something specific about the underlying trend of the market, this should still enable you to make some kind of a prediction that you can then check out against the chart to see if you're interpreting the information from that indicator adequately or not. So it's just a note really to be aware that you might need to adapt this task slightly to accommodate different indicators. Now, one last thing to bear in mind, because different indicators will give out information differently, if you're using this exercise to train yourself to understand the indicator better, then you need to choose an indicator and stick to it until you've mastered it, and only then move on to another indicator. Otherwise, if you keep moving quickly from indicator to indicator, you'll never master any of them. Now look out for the next episode because in this I'll be showing you step by step the way I use this task as an educational tool. So I'll show you the kind of process that I take to learn how to interpret the messages given out by indicators to eventually be able to then successfully do the task you've just seen. Now, if this next episode is already released by the time you're watching this, then it will be the video that you see here. If not, 
then be sure to subscribe and set an alert so that you get notified when it is released. And if you're new to Darwin X and you want to find out more about the benefits that we provide to traders just like you, then click this link that you see here to read more. So good luck when you put yourself to the test with today's task. And until next time, trade safe.